Hey everyone, my name is Oliver. Today we're going to be reviewing 13 Canadian engineering universities. What I've done to kind of make this make more sense is I'm using three different criteria. The first criteria is the match rate or employment rate of graduating students within six months of graduation. A match rate is basically, do these skills match to the job they are currently working? My second criteria is going to be the graduation rate of a certain university, because I think that this shows that they do a good job of actually bringing up the students that are struggling. And this is the closest thing I could find to like a student to professor ratio for a certain university. The last one, I wanted to make it kind of a ratio of starting salary to student loans taken out. But I think instead what I'm gonna do is the default rate on student loans because the default rate shows basically how many people are in default on their student loans, which implies that the university or you know the student themselves didn't do a good job of figuring out their loans. You know They weren't able to find a job and now they can't pay off these student loans. The most important thing to me when I was choosing these criteria was to make sure that I wasn't looking at things like the size of the university, the types and accolades of the professors that are at that university, the kind of global renowned brand names of the university. I wanted this to be more of a objective, do they do a good job of training students to become actual engineers. So in essence, are these universities actually teaching employable skills? So with all of that out of the way, let's get into some rankings. So I'm gonna do this in kind of no particular order and I'm gonna kick it off with McGill University, which is located in Quebec. And this university actually did pretty well. They have approximately an 85% graduation rate. They have approximately a 91% employability or match rate. And they have an extremely low default rate, which puts them somewhere in the A tier or about fourth place. I also recently had the chance to visit their campus and I think it's honestly a very cool campus. In the middle of winter, it would kind of suck because the entire thing is built on the side of a mountain, uh, but it is a pretty cool campus. And if you go there, you know, it's a good university. It does, it does train its engineer as well. Now, next up, I'm gonna look at Carleton University. This one did not do nearly as well as McGill. It had a graduation rate of 73.8% and a match rate of 83.5% and a default rate of 2.5%. Um, the average default rate was around between zero and 6%. So 2.5% kind of puts them like in the middle of the pack. And they ended up landing themselves in 10th place out of the 13 universities that I have listed here. So that would put them in the C tier. Here's a picture of their campus if you're interested. Also, a cool thing about Carleton is that you can actually skate on the Rideau Canal in Ottawa directly onto the university campus. So if you've ever wanted to live like the ultimate Canadian life, Carleton is probably the place to do it. So next up, we have Ryerson, which landed one place lower than Carleton at 11th which unfortunately puts it in the D tier because there isn't that much space on this tier list. And the reason for this is because of their really high um, default rates and really low graduation rate. The graduation rate at Ryerson was 76%, the employment match rate was 80%, and their default rate was uh, 2%, which put it just under Carleton University. I've personally never visited Ryerson, but contrary to the ranking here, I actually have heard good things about the engineering program there. And I guess it depends on the type of student that you are. They are in the D tier just based on these statistics. Next up, we have the University of Windsor, which placed itself just above Carleton University in ninth place. And they had a 77% graduation rate, 81.5% match rate, and a 6.7% default rate which is the highest default rate of any university on this list. I don't know why that is. I haven't dug super deep into it. They can't find jobs in the region or whatever the reason. Unfortunately, University of Windsor does not have the great, greatest track record when it comes to default. And now, unfortunately, in last place, we have York University. Um, and the classic saying, you know, if you can hold a fork, you can go to York, seems to hold true here. And that's because they have a 58% graduation rate for their engineering students, which is quite frankly, god awful. That means almost half of the entire class drops out before they graduate. Um, their employment match rate, actually, um, they didn't have anything for engineering and they had a default rate of 4.1%. So equally high, equally high, just like the University of Windsor. 
all of these universities are struggling a little bit with their default rates. And I think that the reason that they might not have had an employment match rate is because they might have had a lack of students answering this survey where I got my information from. And I'll link that survey in the description if you want to look at the information yourself. So next up, we have Queen's University, which landed itself nicely in sixth place. They actually had one of the highest graduation rates, actually the highest graduation rate at 91.4% which is amazing. So if you want to guarantee that you'll graduate and also have a really high match rate of 89.9%, then definitely go to Queens. They do, they're doing something right because their match rate is so high. So I'm gonna put them in the A tier um, because you know they deserve it. They're doing really well. They got basically first place in two categories. So, um, you know, great job Queens, um, definitely go to Queens if you're interested in doing engineering. All right, next up we have Ontario Tech University or UOIT in second last place, right before York University. They are a newer university, so you know they don't have the greatest track record and they're probably still building up their facilities, but they had a pretty terrible 63.5% graduation rate, a the worst match rate actually of 76.2% outside of York, which didn't list one and a default rate of 2.2% on the student loans. So unfortunately, Ontario Tech University did not do a great job and have landed themselves in the D tier. Next up, we have my homeland of McMaster University. They landed themselves in seventh place, so just behind Queens, and they had a 79.6% graduation rate, which honestly is kind of surprising to myself, um, but also at the same time, not super surprising. Um, this could be for a variety of reasons, I'm not too sure. They had a 90% match rate, which I think is one of the reasons that they're up in seventh place. And uh, they had a 1.6% default rate, which isn't too bad considering all the other ones below them. So we're gonna place them in the B tier because they don't have the greatest graduation rate. Um, but you know, I do go there. I like the campus, it's a good university. Um, would I go again to McMaster? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, so let's move on to UBC. So the University of British Columbia was kind of hard to find information on, but they ended up landing themselves in eighth place. And this was based on an estimated graduation rate of 75%. I kind of took the university average as the engineering average, which might not be accurate. And their employment match rate was about 85% and their default rate I didn't have much information on, but um, I'm assuming that it would be about the same as a upper tier university since they usually land themselves higher on the list. So that being the case, they land in eighth place and they end up in the B tier next to McMaster University. Now this tier list is actually working out surprisingly well. We haven't gotten any S tiers, but we are about to get our first S tier with the University of Toronto. They landed themselves in third place with a employment uh, graduation rate of 90%, an employment rate of 90.8%, and a default rate of zero. So they had the best default rate. Nobody from the University of Toronto defaulted on their student loans at the time that this information was taken. Historically, they did have some students defaulting, but as of this particular year that the survey was done, they did not have any defaults, which is insane. Obviously, Toronto, University of Toronto, most well-known university in Canada, um, it is located in the city of Toronto. You can see the CN Tower from the university. Um, so it's a pretty cool place to go to school and they have proven themselves here by landing in the S tier. Next up in fifth place, we have the University of Alberta. So this will land them in the A tier next to Queens and McGill. And the University of Alberta was also hard to find information on, uh, but I found a graduation rate of 79% an employment match rate of 92%, which is one of the highest as well. And the default rate was unknown, but like I said, since they are kind of in the upper tier universities, I will assume that they have a decent uh, default rate and that's why they ended up in the A tier. I've heard good things about the engineering program and good things about the industry contacts that the University of Alberta has with employers. Now we're left with two more universities here, Obviously, both of these are going to end up in the S tier. We have the University of Waterloo and Western University. 
Western came in second place. Waterloo came in first place. Western University had a graduation rate of 87%, um, but they had an employment match rate of 91%. The reason Waterloo ended up first is because their employment match rate is 94.3% which is really freaking good. So if you want to go to a university and get a job in that field, like almost guaranteed, the place to go is the University of Waterloo. They will really like make you get a good job and a job that is in your field. Um, Waterloo apparently just does everything better. So, you know, if you need a place to go, Waterloo is the place to be. Western coming in close behind at 91% match rate. So all these universities, did a really good job. Even A and B tiers, in my opinion, are pretty top tier universities. And I'm obviously a little biased because I go to McMaster. That is my list. But the thing that I think is most important personally, selfishly, is the employment match rate for the program that you're going into. Especially when it comes to engineering where you're paying thousands of dollars more than any other program. You really wanna get your money's worth out of it. And that usually means being employed in the field that you know you go to school for and that you try and learn about. That is my two cents. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tier list. If you did, be sure to leave me a like, subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.